Hello everyone and welcome back to our NPC AI series. In the first part we were taking a look at the mass AI zone graphs and we got them into our scene, into our little village and now in this part we're going to be working on the config asset which basically defines how the mass AI was going to work in our area. So let's get started. So the next thing to do on our mass AI system is to create the data asset which defines our mass agents. So the way the mass AI system works is it you're not dragging in all these NPCs manually because um, if you think about it, like a giant city that would be almost impossible. So what you need to do is basically tell the mass system how and what it can be spawned in and how they're going to behave and that's all defined via a data asset. So you're going to go into your content browser and you go to miscellaneous and choose data asset and in there you'll find the mass entity config asset click select and we'll call this one da npc config and we'll open this up so inside here is where we define literally all the behaviors and all the things that your mass agents can do um and a lot of that is going to be first of all setting up where it's going to get information from and then talking about where, what's it going to do with that information. So once that finishes loading up. And you'll see here we've got traits. We can add array elements to it. And the first trait we're going to do is going to be an assorted fragments uh, trait. This is basically where it's, what data is it going to go fetch in. And if we open this up, we're going to add a few fragments to this. So the first one we're going to add to it is going to be the uh, mass actor fragment. So choose that one, and that's going to basically fetch the actor uh, that we have assigned to uh, be using our mass uh, system, which we haven't done so yet. But leave that one blank, and in there, it looks like we're going to need a few more. Um, the first one we're going to, next one we're going to add is going to be the transform. So we get the location of the uh, the guy walking around, and we also want to get the agent radius map fragment, so you know what kind of radius they have. Because when we do collision things, we need to know that information. And you can see that over here, we can change the radius there. And we also need, uh, oh, um, here, one more, which is the mass, uh, viewer info fragment. And this allows you, so it can see the, 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 um, for LOD purposes, which we'll go over in a second, which entities it should be using instead. Okay, so we need these assorted fragments first of all. You can close that, and then we're going to add another one, which I've accidentally already done, for index one of the traits. So the first index we're going to add here is going to be agent capsule collision sync. This is going to sync up the collision of the capsule the characters walking around in. And you can open these up, and in here we're going to turn off sync transform because we don't want it to move around because of it. We want it just to sync the direction from actor to mass. Uh, no, sorry, uh, mass. Actor to, uh, actor to mass, yeah. We then want to go and add another trait. And this one's going to be agent movement sync. And this one, we want the mass AI to move the agent around. So we're going to change that to mass to actor. Add another one. And do agent orientation sync. And similarly, you're going to change it from both ways to mass to actor. So once again, the mass AI is telling them which way they should be looking, which way they should be going, and which way they should, how they should be moving. Okay, so that's that, getting the data and sending it back and forth, the basic data. The next thing we need to do is set up the... Um, what, what is it called? Um, crowd member. So you click on crowd member. This is so you can identify and tag uh, uh, the actor as a crowd. Okay? And so it just comes in as a crowd member. The next one we're going to add is the crowd visualization. And if you open this up, you can determine which actors used based upon which LOD system is being used. So LOD system is when your ca ca camera is far away from something, it will render in something different from what it is if it's close up to something. Um, so the benefits of this is like for performance reasons, if you're really, really far away, you don't want to bring in high detailed actors with complex behaviors on them. They don't really need that stuff. 
Uh, they just need basic things. And in this case, we can set what those things, uh, which what those types are. So the high res template actor, we're going to choose um, my NPC character, which is just a basic character, no code on it at the moment. So I'm going to choose that one from the drop down list. And from the drop down, we're going to choose my NPC character. And we also do the same for my low res one. Good, we're not bothering with it in this case. We're then going to go down to the parameters, open this up. And in here, you'll see LOD representation. And here you've got what actors are going to be assigned different LOD settings. So you've got high, medium, low, and off. So as you can see here, high and low are set up just fine for high and medium. But the low has been set to use static mesh instances. And that is set up so that if it's really far away, it'll just replace it with just a static mesh. It's not going to do anything. So I'm going to go into my high and keep it as high res spawn actor. Change this one to high res spawn actor. And also change the low to high res spawn actor. And we can close that. And then I want to go down to LOD parameters and then do LOD max count. And this tells you how many is it going to spawn when it's far away. So how many could it spawn? And we've got 10 for high, 20 for medium, low 500 and off you can have quite a lot. So you can leave it like this if you want. Uh, also, if you want to increase it to this, you can do. But for now, we're going to leave it as is. But if you want to increase it, that's where it goes. And once we've done that, we can close the crowd visualization trait. Okay, next one. We're going to go in here and add in the there's quite a few to add so let's go to add avoidance so avoidance is how it's going to avoid other actors on the path on the lane so now you need that one your other one is it's uh movement so click on movement which is obviously how it moves and in here this is where you change up the speed of the character when they walk and move so it's not controlled by the character movement component anymore it's controlled by this okay so this is where that will go and next we're going to have is uh, steering. So obviously you can turn. And again, you can tweak the steering that they have in here. But we'll leave it like that. Add another trait. And we're going to use a zone graph navigation. So it can navigate the zones. And we can leave it like this, I think. Oh, no. Let's go to lane filter and change any tags to be using the pedestrian or high class tag. We'll make them use both pedestrian and high class for now. Um, but you can obviously specify this out with different data assets. And the query radius is how far away is it going to look for a lane that is suitable for it. So 500 will be just fine. And close that. Next one we're going to add to it is going to be um LOD collector so this is going to basically just fetch the data it has for the LOD system so it could be used for the visualization stuff <clears throat> um smooth orientation so if you want to turn smoothly and like interpolate between rotations you need smooth orientation and again you've got settings here where you can tweak and change all those things there but we can leave them as default um anything else i'm missing let me have a quick look. Uh, can I remember? Yeah, we've got that. If you want to look at something, you've got that there. Oh, navigate obstacle. We need navigate obstacle. So it can walk around objects. And... Um, we will need state tree eventually, but we'll do it in the next part. Um, I think that's it for now. So we're going to hit save and close this. Now, to get them spawning and using this, we have to go to our NPC and add in our mass agent component. And this is where you define your agent over here. So go to parent and choose a data asset. And below that, you can add more traits to it if you want to add specific traits that are particular to this type of character. So, for example, a car would have slightly different traits than a person. So you can customize it somewhat there. Um... But for now, I think that's it. We can leave that as that, compile and save. Now to spawn them into the world, you need to go into your um, place actors thing, go to all classes and search for mass and you should see mass spawner. I'm gonna drag that into our world. And on the right hand side, we can choose the count of how many we're gonna spawn uh, in. We'll do like 10, for example. The entity types, we're gonna click on the add arrow 
and choose our entity config. If you want to add more, you can do so you can like change proportions of them. So you can have like 50% one, 50% the other, or, or however you want to break it down. We've only got one, so it doesn't really matter. On the spawn data generators, this is where it's going to spawn the object. So you've got two options for this. You can add a zone graphs or you can add EQS spawn points. We're, we've got zone graphs, so we're going to keep it on zone graphs. And again, you can add multiple to that if you wish to as well. And that's it, I think. So the last thing we'll do is just go to build and do build zone graph. And there you go. Oh, there you go. Now we can see the zones and where they are placed in the world. Excellent. Okay, so let's push simulate. And you can see our characters are now spawning in and added to the world, um, as you can see. Now you are going to get warnings in the corner uh, saying some fragments are added with multiple traits and can only be added by one. This is just a warning. It's not an error. It's not going to cause any major issues. It's, as I say, an experimental feature. So this is just something that has been overlooked and they need to basically get rid of. Uh, basically, what it's saying is that those traits that you add, they add their own sort of fragments to it, which um, conflict with other fragments you in other traits that you've already added them. So you get like a clash and it's only going to pick the first one. Uh, that it has so it, it's not the end of the world it does have the fragment already it does it's just saying that you've got you've got wasted stuff in here um hopefully they fix it in when they come to release mass properly and take that stuff out um but as you can see they're not moving they just stand there um and yeah uh next part we're gonna make them move around So there you have it. We can now spawn in these uh, various NPCs. But obviously, they're not moving really around and they're not avoiding anything. They're not doing anything. They're just standing there. So in the next part, we're going to go through and showcase how to make them move around and avoid each other, as well as animate them and avoid you, the player, too. You can watch the next part right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my Patreon members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.